Well, hello and welcome once again at the Sangyong Torres or the KGM Torres. And this is a slightly different car because I was interested if the Torres can have a slightly lower fuel consumption in the lower specification model. So this one has smaller wheels and it is also a little bit less equipped and it also is a two wheel drive, not a four wheel drive model. But anyway, let's have a walk around around the car so we still have a very good looking car here it's very sharp looking face and very sort of sturdy and dependable which i like uh, the drag coefficient of the car is as previously 0 0.37 so it is quite an unaerodynamic car right but you can see you can you have a lot of these sturdy looking sharp looking looking pieces here on the car now let's go to the wheels so I wanted I wanted to know if with the with the smaller wheels it can achieve a lower fuel consumption. What we also have now are summer tires. The car before it was on winter tires, so this should also help it. So we have 18-inch wheels with the tires of 235, 55, R18. So really, still uh, wide enough tires. We still have a, a positive caster here on the front suspension, which is a McPherson suspension. Uh, but to me, actually, it seems slightly, slightly less positive than on the on the higher specification model with bigger wheels. Um, but that might be connected with the, the lower mass that is here, and, and so on. Still, what I like here now, we go further down from the side. I like the conception of the car. So you, you're sitting quite far behind the front wheels. So that's good for the weight distribution. The wheelbase is uh, 2.68 meters, not the longest maybe. Uh, but still a decent for comfort. Then in the rear, can I see something? Yeah, it's, it's almost straight, the damper there. So now still the design here, this C pillar, very nice and defender looking like. And uh, the, the design is also unchanged here at the rear. So you still can open the boot from, from here, from this door handle. And we have, we have a big boot which is good and practical. You have loads of air, loads of storage here under the floor as well. These side bins. So it's, yeah, it's, it's really practical. You have strong LED light here. You have a 12 volt socket also. Uh, we're only missing a few hooks, if I, if I see. And you also have this shade. Yeah, so really practical in, in the booth. Really, really big. It's quite enormous, actually. Um, yeah, I also, like, I also like how wide the car is. It's, it's really sort of wide and I like the stance of the car. Uh, we still have, if I look at the, at the camber, we still, we still have more negative camber at the rear wheels, which helped as previously with a really good, actually good um, behavior in the corners. So it drives surprisingly well in the corners. And now let's also have a look into the, into the rear. And let's check out the space in the rear. So it's 2.68 meter wheelbase and look how, comfortable i can sit here i can just spread my legs i have really that much room in all dimensions it is absolutely incredibly comfortable and also in terms of comfort i have huge door beams i have air vents i still have a two usb c uh, two usb a connectors and a armrest with cup holders so yeah uh really really great in its practicality and comfort for the family here in the back and also for the family uh, two uh, anchor points there for the child seat so really good and also let's have a look at the engine as usual so what we have under the bonnet is a 1.5 liter engine and where do i open it where do i open it oh here Okay, so we have hydraulic uh, lifters for the bonnet, which is nice. And we have a 1.5 uh, GDI, TGDI engine. Uh, it has 120 kilowatts or 163 horsepower. It's mounted, it mount, it's mounted in front of the front axle. We have a turbo mounted at the, in front of the engine. But it's uh, the engine bay itself. Look at this. There is that much space for everything. I mean... Yeah, the mechanics, they will be really glad servicing this car. And you also have the heat shield for the battery, which is attached that I really like. Um, 
So yeah, pretty cool. And what we have powered here are only the front wheels. So this is the, the front wheel drive variant of the car, not the four wheel drive, like there was previously with the top specification model. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's close the bonnet. Let's sit in the car. Let's drive it further down the road and talk about if the fuel consumption actually got better on average. Oh. Well, hello and welcome in the Torres with the lower specification model that I took for the test just simply to see whether it can achieve a better fuel economy than the top spec with the four wheel drive and 20, 20 inch wheels that I was getting before because I thought, well, let me just put this away because I thought that the fuel consumption was quite, quite big and uh, uh, the fuel tank on the other hand, well, quite small, has to be said, 50 liters. So now the lower specification model, I think it's called Style. Let me just quickly check. Where is it? Um, yeah, it's it's called Style. And we have a few uh, equipment here. So we don't we miss out on panoramic sunroof. We don't have ventilated seats. We only have heated seats, but they are still they, they are still very nice leather leather seats. With, uh, with a great uh, great support actually for an SUV and they are very comfortable so that is good um, and we miss out on ambient lighting here there is no no ambient lighting I think I saw a little stripe somewhere but it is not it is not such that it was in the top in the top specification but let me turn on the car because it's getting really hot in here um, but yeah what we still are getting here are these three screens so that is good. We still have all of these assistants. Um, so we have the lane assist, which is which is quite annoying and quite also you need quite a few steps here in the settings to turn it off. So we can go through it now. So you, you press this, you go into settings, uh, assistance assistance of the vehicle. You press uh, well this. Uh, then you go down the front assist and here you have to find the LDV and LK something and then you have to turn on these two features and that's it so yeah a little bit annoying but uh, yeah it's okay then but then if you want to turn off the another assistant which is the start stop you can turn off very quickly on this on this dim screen here where you set the the ventilation and the air conditioning which is good you can also change the driving modes we have three modes to choose from the normal sport and winter um, of course this car, this car is front wheel drive so winter mode it just helps somehow with the traction and then you still have this very nice animation of the seat when you want to hit your seat and hit this hit the steering wheel so yeah quite nice actually and you can and I, I now found out that you can even turn off the screen but otherwise uh, from the practicality of the interior it still it still remained very practical so you have very huge huge storage areas here in the door here in the central panel very deep very deep arm, very deep armrest with 12 volt socket a great great space for this glove box uh, ahead of the passenger and the, the interior is very nicely made we have a we have maybe a lower class plastic here on the door yes but the, but the dashboard is still very nice and squishy and ve it's all it's very well put together nothing squeaks really it doesn't feel it doesn't feel very cheap in terms of build quality really so good and uh, in front of me i have this big steering wheel four spoke steering wheel um yeah so anyway let's set off let me turn on the air conditioning as well and let's drive just uh, on the left on the left side from the steering wheel you have a parking handbrake electronic of course so what is the experience with this car well this car is a front wheel drive yes it is and uh, it's front wheel drive low equipment and you have smaller wheels and now also it's on summer tires not winter tires and so the fuel consumption has been accordingly better um, I was able to achieve the average of 7.8 7.7 uh, combined on the motorway B roads and city which is an, is an improvement and makes the usability of car immediately much greater um, yeah 
but it still sort of feels that having an option of a diesel engine would really suit this car because it yeah I, I mean the diesel engine and even the diesel sound would just would just suit this sort of this sort of car in terms of styling in terms of ruggedness that it wants to give you um so yeah um but it did what i was hoping it would do so better fuel economy although you are missing out on four wheel drive which is a car looking like this uh is maybe is maybe a downgrade but if you just want to buy it as a family car as a as a competitor to some of the other mid-size suvs that also uh, give you front wheel drive well i think this is a very reasonable but we still have this fuel consumption yeah 7.7 .7. it's all down to the aerodynamic coefficient but it's much better than than with the four-wheel drive and now in terms of how it's driving so we have a higher sidewall tires of course um and it does feel like that uh, like having a higher sidewall because if you try to really corner hard you have this rolling of the of the sidewall underneath so you, so yeah you have a little bit of of more understeer that's 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 right um but the ride is is slightly improved it's slightly more comfortable although this car isn't a very very isn't very soft car uh you have you have great deal of, of feedback and uh, yeah it, it feels it feels very nice and sort of drivers like um i also like the the whole conception of the car you are, the driver is sitting very far behind the front wheels so it feels it feels sort of a, a rear biased in terms of weight and i do like that i have to say and uh, this also gives the car a very nice balanced feel when going through angulations uh, decompressions, compressions, so it, it feels very well sorted in this regard. It feels very nice and precise through the corners. It it doesn't lean on the front wheels. It just it just drives through corners very nice and balanced, and I really do like that. So yeah, in this regard, again, still still a very decent, very decently driving car, right? And then there is the price, which is much more affordable than any of its competitors you pay like this sort of money for a smaller car this this car is slightly bigger than the the likes of hyundai tucson skoda karok um in in terms of dimensions and also the i think the, the boot and practicality um so yeah this car is a great value for money i actually i actually quite like it being a sort of a bigger mid-size suv it has a it has a nice character, uh, like a rugged design. I do like that very rugged face, and it uh, from a from point of driving experience, it's it's a very it's a very nice car to drive. So uh, yeah, I do like that. Let's just do a little bit of acceleration here. Uh, there's a police, but anyway, we are in the sport mode. Look at this. Okay, it's not the it's not the fastest car. We have 163 horsepower engine and a front wheel drive. Yeah, it's not the fastest car, but uh, the dynamics are enough for driving you about, even doing some safe overtaking, let's say. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to find out with this car. How is the fuel economy? It is improved. It also improves the day-to-day -day life with this car. And I think if you're looking for a car like this, it's a very decent car. Uh, to to try so you should give it a try before before considering what to choose um, yeah so from my side I would be it to the Sangyong and KGM Torres with style with the lower specification model and smaller wheels and well keep watching keep subscribing more videos coming on very soon and in the meantime take care and I see you at the very next video goodbye